I'm off to Muckleborough Mil Military Museum and that's not difficult to say when you haven't got your teeth in. In 200 yards, turn left onto the A149. Now turn left. So this is Sheringham again. Yeah, picking up signs for it now. And this is the coast road. So this is Weybourne. Muckleborough collection. Okay, so it says down here somewhere. Oh, as opposed to what the sat nav says. Oh, so it's just here. Please turn soon. You have entered a dead end street. Please make a U turn. Now we're here. Car park. V1 missile. Well, V1 rocket, really, wasn't it? It wasn't a missile. That's a big gun. How it's a so I went to the Muckleborough military collection on Monday and I went on my own and Jenny was back at the motorhome looking after Tara and Poppy didn't really want them going around the uh, museum, uh, they're not allowed in there. There are some kennels there for £10 and you can leave your dog in the kennels but didn't want to do that, they can just bark their heads off, they're just not used to it. So Jenny kindly looked after the dogs. So I thought I'd take you round the museum. The other thing was I recorded all my footage but I didn't actually say anything. I think I was a little bit uh, shy to say anything on my own. Normally I feel like I'm talking to Jenny as well as the audience and uh, there was also some music playing so I was a little bit frightened I might get some copyright strikes so I'm going to take you around and I'm going to watch the video with you as it were so let's get it going so here we are um, going into the, the uh, I keep calling it a museum it's a collection it's got a big shop obviously a lot of military themed stuff and uh, they were still following the Covid precautions. It was actually a camp, an army camp, Wayborn camp, back in the time of the war. And as you go in, there's a big model that greets you, and that's a model of the camp as it was. I think it was 1943. It's a really detailed model. Uh, apparently, Wayborn camp wasn't a very good place to be if, uh, if you were a soldier, because they put you in bill tents. And it could be a bit windy and cold, I should think. So it wasn't the most popular choice of sites. That's what the, the sign's telling you there. It's a picture of a sort of military convoy. And I think this scene was meant to be when Churchill was, was visiting the camp. A little bit during World War I here. There's also a camp then. Some World War I trucks. Yeah, there it is. So back to the model, and that's a radio-controlled plane. And the story with that is they tried to shoot it down um, as a demonstration of how effective anti-aircraft guns were, and uh, they completely failed. And Winston Churchill was watching this, and he told them to go and get it right, or all the senior staff would be uh, would be dismissed. 
it took 45 minutes of continuous firing on the second attempt before the aircraft actually spun into the sea um, and it was finally hit by a 40 millimeter Bofors gun so it wasn't the best demonstration ever there are lots there are lots and lots of models uh, in the collection uh, it's a great collection of daggers and knives and bayonets and all sorts of evil looking weapons you know, Gurkhas weapons bayonets and a great collection of um, artwork really art that began with the horror of the trenches they uh, used shell cases and bullet bullets to fashion well art I guess quite interesting Cle great collection of machine guns submachine guns in this case Kalashnikov's feature AK-47s rocket launchers all sorts of more we more modern weapons and a flying helmet with air supply and uh, life in 1945 I guess this was meant to uh, represent picture of Winston Churchill on the uh, on the wall she was obligatory that's what they would have been wearing this was interesting for Jenny's dad it was uh, prototype bombing aiming instrument and uh, looks pretty complicated they also had infrared binoculars there I noticed those yeah some uh, cameras a cine camera 16mm cine camera used for aerial photography and a Kodak Brownie and then a, an aerial reconnaissance, spell aerial wrongly. A E R. And it's a trench periscope, a number nine. <laughs> more, more guns, more weapons. German hand grenades. And Kalashnikov. And it said on that uh, notice he wished he'd built, made something that helped farmers with their work. For example, a lawnmower. Life in the mortar pit. Lots of regalia in the museum. What I really came to see was the, the military vehicles. Got rather taken by the airfix models here. I think I actually made a model of a Lancaster, that one, up there when I was a kid. And uh, these are all anti-aircraft guns, and uh, all designed to shoot the aircraft down. Obviously, the ones that are above them. And <laughs> so this this was a 1914 uh, gun. It's the sort of gun that you see on ceremonial occasions, you know, when they're saluting the Queen. And still used today for those sort of occasions. And it's carriage. What's it called? I forgot what it's called now. The uh, limber. Carries all the shells behind it. There's some trucks now. I was amazed at this truck. There's four people abreast across there. up front that could carry six just in the cabin there what was this this was a Morris gun tractor and these remained into service in the night into the 1950s then you've got howitzers big guns Uh, shells behind them. I was a little bit taken by this truck here. I think I did my selfie here. Yes, this is a Chevrolet C8 Porty. 
This one's a little bit different because it's actually got a gun mounted in the back. It's just wheeled into the back and you've got a gun. Gun tractor. Not sure I'd fancy driving that with a gun firing behind my left ear. There I go, selfie time. And to the big trucks now. Great big winch on the back of this thing. Massive trucks. Yeah, Scammell Pioneer was a very popular truck during the Second World War. It's 6.4 tonnes. Did 24 miles an hour. So this is a popular truck. You see a lot of these feature in the war. This is the, the Juice and a Half or the Jimmy and a Bristol Bloodhound and this was uh, in use up, right up to 1991 from 1958 to 91 now you're looking at the Diamond T Prime Mover a 1942 British spec tank transporter used by the US Army 6x4 wheel drive top speed 23 miles an hour what a beast Wouldn't like to pay the fuel bill for it. Right, so this is the Thunderbird Mark II. When I first saw it, I thought it said Thunderbird II, but it was introduced in 1965, and the missiles it fired could reach 1800 miles an hour. <laughs> Quite incredible, really. It weighed two and a half tons. This is the Ford War Office truck, the Watts, and uh, used throughout World War II. This one actually transported the camp cinema reels and supplies. And behind it is the Leyland Hippo. Great name. It was introduced in 1944 and was still in use in the 1980s and its low loading height made it very popular. Right, so this is the M29 Weasel from 1943. Obviously it was designed for use in snow and it saw service in Korea and Vietnam. One of those strange looking vehicles. So now looking at the Ford Amphibian Jeep. Uh, it couldn't handle the waves on the sea, and it was, so it was used for crossing rivers, but it was poor on the road. Apparently the seat cushions doubled as life savers. You probably would need them with this. So this is a Centurion Mark V. Now it was never never used in combat in World War II, as it was introduced in 1945 too late, but it saw action at the Yom Kippur War with the Israelis. And next to it is the Chieftain Mark V, uh, sorry, the Chieftain from 1963, which was known as the best armoured and armed main battle tank during the Cold War, saw action in the 1980 and 88 Iran-Iraq War, weighed in at 50 tonnes. So this is the Scorpion reconnaissance vehicle, it had a 4.2 litre Jaguar engine and could do, not, could do 50 miles an hour and 0 to 30 in 16 seconds. It also had nuclear, biological and chemical protection. So this is the Swingfire rocket launcher. It uses wire guided rockets. And now I've got the tracked rapier, another rocket launcher. Look at the controls inside this. Quite amazing. All sort of Cold War stuff. The hatch above. Mm. 
and the rockets on the back. So this is the Panzer PZ61, another vehicle with nuclear, chemical and biological protection. More powerful versions apparently had a 600 brake horsepower diesel engine. So this is the M47 pattern which was introduced in 1952 and it had a 90mm high velocity gun. I'll try to have a little look inside this. But, uh, was sort of a Couldn't really see anything. No, couldn't see anything. There's an impressive collection of models, everything from steam engines, the Bismarck, Gustav railway gun, it's got a huge collection of shells, model of HMS. War Spite, and HMS Furious aircraft carrier, we've also got a model of one of the first super tankers, the British Admiral, so big I couldn't uh, get it all in one shot. So into the armoured car, so this is the Daimler Mark 1 which served from 1941 to 1960. It says there, and next to it is one of my favourites, the Greyhound M8. It was lightly armed, but with six-wheel drive. It was America's most used armoured car of World War II. Later versions were fitted with a 50mm Browning anti-aircraft gun, used for troop transport <laughs> as much as anything. This is a notorious vehicle really, the Humber Pig as it was called, probably called that because they were difficult to drive or because of its nose. It was often used for breaking down barricades in, during the Northern Ireland Troubles. Uh, probably the most famous vehicle of all in World War II, the Jeep. This one's a Ford and between 1945, sorry, 1941 and 1945 Ford produced 278,000 and Willys produced 361,000. They carried troops, they towed guns, radios, used as ambulances, ran on rails, they carried royalty and were used by the SAS. And this is the Saracen Armoured Personnel Carrier, six wheel independent drive, eight passengers each with gun ports. It saw service in Northern Ireland again. It was used during the Arab-Israeli War in 1973. And a quick look inside. Impressive looking thing. And a quick look round the back. Please do not climb inside. There you go. This is another famous vehicle, the Austin K2, featured in the Ice Cold in Alice film, also driven by Her Majesty the Queen during World War II, during her service, and it's often referred to lovingly as a Katie. look round the back and try to get my camera through these bars here but you didn't really want to end up in the back of one of these and now we've got the Alvis Stalwart four-wheel steering and six-wheel drive and it was designed to be amphibious and it had a capacity of five tons More guns here, uh, AA guns and missiles here with the German 88 Flak 37 gun. A 
and this is the Rapier Mark I missile introduced in 1971 and was still in use in 2020, deployed in London apparently during the Olympic Games in 2012. This is the Bofors 50mm anti-aircraft gun used for low-flying fast aircraft a high rate of fire but was withdrawn in 1979 when the British Army decided to use just missiles. This monster is the Russian T-55 track laying tank. It could lay a bridge in just two minutes and retrieve it in six. Since the museum acquired it, they could never use it because all the instructions apparently were in Czech and they've never translated them. This is the M5A1 Stuart, referred to as the honey for its reliability used by the British Army all over North Africa, Burma and Europe and the US forces against the Japanese. This tank is probably the most famous for film buffs, the Sherman, the most numerous of all American tanks. This one was Canadian built, a Grizzly, and used in World War II and in Korea. There you go, all made up. This one is another famous tank, this is the T-34, T-35 Russian tank, fast and well armoured and its diesel engines worked very well in Russian winters. It also had a big 35mm gun which was used to great effect in the Battle of Kursk when some 5,000 Russian tanks defeated 3,000 German tanks. It was in service from 1940 to 1958 and 40,000 were made. This one's only repair in 70 years apparently was a broken track tension arm. And this is the Russian T-55 with over a hundred thousand of these. This is the highest number of any tank ever produced. This is the A-34 Comet tank which was produced in response to the German Panther and Tiger tanks. It was armed with a 77mm high velocity gun, had a powerful Rolls-Royce Merlin engine and entered service in December 1944 but was gradually replaced by the Centurion. And the final vehicle I looked at was a Sexton self-propelled gun. And you can climb up and you can have a look inside see what it was like being in the back of a Sexton self-propelled gun. And I'm not sure I'd want to be in there. Pretty open in there. Yeah, no, that's good. There's the kennels. That's it for the Muckleborough military collection. Um, really went there to have a look at the tanks uh, and there's obviously a lot of uh, uh, memorabilia models and that sort of thing there but uh, it's a good collection and uh, if you're into military vehicles it's well worth a visit. And, uh, so if you enjoyed it give us a thumbs up, uh, remember to subscribe and we'll catch up with you in the next one. Mines it verges. So slightly worry inside. Yeah, you can have a ride in them.